In this recording, we will look at an application of vectors to finding the work done by a force on an object. And the situation where we can use vector methods to find the work done is as follows. First, consider a force F with constant magnitude and direction with respect to time, where this force F is acting on an object and causing the object to be displaced from point A to point B. And in this situation, because the force is causing the object to be displaced from point A to B, we say that work is done on the object by the force. And the work done on the object by the force can be calculated as the dot product of the force F and the displacement vector AB remembering the object is being moved from A to B. That is, the work done by the force on the object is calculated as W, which will be a scalar, equal to the force vector in a scalar product with vector AB. And it's always important to make sure we use the correct units. And a common unit for work done is joules where one joule is defined as a unit of energy equal to the work done when a force of one newton acts through a distance of one metre. So that means that when we look at a problem, we should first check if the units are newtons and metres, and if we come across a situation where it is not in those units, we could always think about trying to convert into these units so that the final answer would be in joules. So here we'll look at an example where it already is in newtons and metres and focus on how to find the work done using vector methods. So here we're looking at moving a crate of electrical fittings where we're told that the force F has magnitude 84 newtons and is applied in the direction of a vector B where B is 3i minus 2j plus 6k. And if the crate is moved from a point A with coordinates negative 2, negative 1, 1 to a point B with coordinates 1, 1, 2 in 3D space, measured in metres, find the work done. So first of all here the force is in Newton, the distance displacement is in metres, so therefore work done will be in joules. So we see that to calculate the work done it's the scalar product or dot product of F with AB. So let's work out F and AB first of all. Now we're told that the force is in the direction of 3i minus 2j plus 6k. So is that vector the force? And the answer is the force will be some scalar multiple of that vector because the force is in that direction, but we know the force must have magnitude 84 newton. So we need to multiply this vector by a number such that the magnitude of the resulting vector is 84. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to work out the force vector as the required magnitude of the force, which here will be 84, times a unit vector in the direction of the force, so in this case a unit vector in the direction of B. And the magnitude of the force we know is 84. And to work out a unit vector in the direction of B, a unit vector is a vector of magnitude 1. So that is always worked out as the vector B divided by the magnitude of vector B. And so that is going to be 84 times B, and our vector was 3i minus 2j plus 6k. How do we work out the magnitude of that? Well, it's just the square root of these components 3, negative 2, 6 squared. So 3 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 6 squared, and then the square root of that. And remember this is the force vector F we're finding, so that's 84 times the vector 3i minus 2j plus 6k, 
what is this part here equal to? 9 plus 4 plus 36 is 49. So square root of 49 is the magnitude of that. Square root of 49 is just 7. So the force vector is 84 divided by 7, which is 12. Lots of the vector B, 3i minus 2j plus 6k, that was in the direction of the force. Therefore, the force vector is in fact written like this. And we could expand through, multiply each of those parts by 12, but not essential here. But the work done, we saw, was the dot product of the force with the displacement vector of the object from A to B. So how do we work out vector AB? Well, just a reminder that these actually were our points A and B. So the vector from A to B is actually the position vector of B, OB, minus the position vector of A, OA. So the position vector of B will just be 1I plus 1J plus 2K for the point 112. Subtract off position vector of point A, which will be negative 2I minus 1j plus 1k and hence it can be worked out just working that out algebraically we end up with a b is 3i plus 2j plus k so now we can put this together to find the work done we said that the work done was the dot product of the force with the displacement vector a b so that is just going to be this vector for the force, 12 times 3i minus 2j plus 6k, and a scalar product with the vector for AB, that one, so 3i plus 2j plus k. That 12 can just stay there, everything will be multiplied by 12. How do we work out the scalar product? Well. It's the coefficient of the i's, first of all. So we had 3i, 3i, so that'll be 3 times 3. Then plus the coefficient of the j's, plus negative 2 times 2. And plus a negative will just become a negative, so that becomes minus 2 times 2. And then multiplying the coefficients of the k components together, which was 6k and 1k, so plus 6 times 1. Working that out, 12 times 9 minus 4 is 5 plus 6 is 11. So 12 times 11, which works out to be 132. And we saw that because force was measured in Newton and displacement in metres, work will be in joules. So it is in fact the work done in this case was 132 joules.